also hello everybody and welcome back to another video uh after uh listing my top 10 favorite films of 2017 uh and since we're nearing the end of january and we are right on the cusp of the release of actual real movies again i thought i would um just take uh some time to maybe talk about the films that i'm most anticipating uh for this upcoming year and uh you know maybe hopefully not choose the most obvious ones and uh, maybe put some films out there uh, on your radar that uh, you will maybe uh, that maybe you didn't really know uh, were coming out uh, maybe you hadn't heard about and uh, that you might be interested in you know discovering those films and uh, discovering these filmmakers that I'm about to highlight today these are not organized in any order uh, whatsoever they're more just me rattling off a bunch of films that I want to see uh, they're not in order of preference or anything like that. Uh, that being said, let's start off uh, straight away with the new Xavier Dolan film, uh, The Death and Life of John F. Donovan. Xavier Dolan's a director uh, here from Montreal, from Quebec, and he's pretty much, he has his huge fans, like his absolute fanboys that will uh, die on a hill for him. He also has his detractors. And uh, I sort of fall uh, in the middle with him. Uh, I'm very 50-50. I generally like one of his films, and then the next one, uh, it means I won't like it. Uh, since I didn't really like the last film that he made, uh, which was called It's Only the End of the World, or French people yelling at each other the film, uh, as I like to call it, uh, it probably means that this next one uh, will be uh, right up my wheelhouse. I'm really interested to see how he directs a film in English. I'm really interested to see how he directs uh, English and American actors. Uh, the casting on this thing's pretty amazing. I mean, you've got Jessica Chastain, uh, Adele, I think Natalie Portman's in it. You've got uh, Kate Harrington from Game of Thrones. So just, just a really interesting all-around project. I know it's probably going to be gorgeous because all his films are. He works with uh, André Turpin, who's just about the greatest cinematographer in Quebec. And, um, yeah, I mean, you know, if you're not even 30 and you've already made Mommy and uh, Lawrence anyways, I mean, it doesn't really matter what you do after that. I'm necessarily going to take notice and uh, be excited about any of your future projects. Next up is The Nightingale, directed by Jennifer Kent. Um, yeah, Jennifer Kent, a couple years back, directed a film that really got me back into horror films, uh, which was The Babadook. It was just a surprise hit. It sort of hit the festival circuit. I was hearing things about it, really positive things, and uh, I was living in France at the time, and it didn't come out in theaters. It actually only uh, was released like much later on on uh, video and on streaming services, so I managed to um, find a copy, let's say, and yeah, I was just blown away by taking the basic premise of a horror film but making it essentially a film about raising a child and how children are the worst but also that you love them but how your children yeah just ruin your life in so many ways and i i thought it was it was it was it was creepy it was exciting it was really well acted and um i literally do not know much about uh her upcoming film the nightingale i just know that it's set in 19th century tasmania and if you've ever seen any film set in tasmania you know that it's just gonna look gorgeous because it's just an amazing backdrop for for filmmaking uh, if you've ever seen the hunter uh, with willem dafoe that was shot in tasmania and it's just an incredible location just inherently it's cinematic and i really can't wait to see uh, how she pulls this off Next up is Roma by Alfonso Coran, the director of Children of Men and, uh, of course, of Gravity. Um, and he's going back to a smaller, intimate, uh, more independent-like uh, project uh, in Mexico City. So yeah, something more smaller, more intimate uh, that I'm curious to see. And he's actually shooting the film himself. I mean, he's being helped by a, another Mexican cinematographer who's uh, on his IMDb had only uh, a bunch of shorts listed and, and things that I never heard of, but yeah, he uh, is credited as a co-cinematographer. Uh, and of course, uh, Quaron generally works with the incredible Emmanuel Lebetsky, and it's going to be uh, just real interesting to see how he shoots the film himself and, and if he's going to be missing that uh, incredible eye and incredible lens that Lubetsky brings to every one of his films, even 
you know, the even the Inaritu films, which I'm really not a fan of, but, you know, they always look gorgeous. Uh, next up is High Life by Claire Denis. Uh, she is a French director. If you've never heard of her, you would uh, do yourself a favor and go check out some of her films. Uh, I would, off the top of my head, recommend things like Beau Travail, um, White Material, and the last film she did uh, that I saw was a film called Bastards, which was really dark and really fucked up and really well acted. And uh, yeah, this one, uh, from the information I've gathered, is like a sci-fi film with Robert Pattinson, which I am just so on board the Robert Pattinson hype train at this point uh, because uh, every project he seems to do is either really good or at the very least really interesting. He's working with incredibly talented directors and Claire Denis really is one of them and I hope she can kind of break into that essayist type uh, mold where she is not only well known in her own country but where she starts to get more appeal let's say in, in English speaking countries in the US and in the UK. The Death of Stalin by Armando Iannucci um, you know In the Loop was such a hilariously funny and also very prescient film. Uh, Veep was great. This guy really just has a, a knack for funny dialogue and putting sort of pompous, important people in, in ridiculous situations. And this film's already been out for a while in certain territories. I think it's already been released in the UK. It played TIFF uh, last September, so some people have already seen it, but uh, it will be getting a full release, uh, I think, in a couple of months from now, and I really can't wait uh, to laugh my ass off in uh, a packed theater. Next one is uh, Ash is the Purest White by Chinese director Jia Zhang Ke. Um, this is maybe cheating a little bit because I don't think this will actually get a release at least over here until 2019. Uh, this reeks of the kind of film that uh, will tour festivals in 2018 like probably Cannes, maybe TIFF, you know the bigger festivals and will get a release uh, later on but yeah, Zhe Zhang Ke is one of the greatest directors working today. If you haven't seen any of his films, they're all great. I couldn't recommend enough. Uh, his 2012 or 2013 film called A Touch of Sin, which has to be one of the greatest films about loneliness, isolation, loss of identity. It is just an absolutely brilliant introspection into uh, modern day China. The next film that is uh, on my list is actually a big budget uh, Hollywood blockbuster. Uh, but it's a series that I really have a huge fondness for. It's the Mission Impossible series. And um, yeah, Mission Impossible 6. I was really quite frightened when they gave the series to Christopher McQuarrie for the fifth one. Uh, I loved Ghost Protocol so much. I thought it was pretty much the perfect action movie. And I really didn't love Christopher McQuarrie's track record. But I was tremendously happy and satisfied with the... Uh, Mission Impossible 5 that we got it was it was in many ways almost the closest one to a Bond film that the franchise had ever done And I mean that's really the highest praise I could give it. I'm a huge James Bond fans. I even like the bad ones um, I'm super hyped for Bond 25 obviously There are series that take pride in the fact that they sh still shoot on film they still do a lot of things practically. Uh, they do a lot of their own stunts, and yeah, it shows. It's 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 what I like to say about uh, Christopher Nolan is that, you know, their films the way they should be made, which is you make them as practical as you can, and you try and do everything in camera, and you put all that money that you have on your screen, and then you just you know augment it in post to make it look awesome. Next one is Au Poste by Quentin Dupieux. Uh, Quentin Dupieux is a French filmmaker, but he's also a, an electronic music DJ producer uh, that some people may know. He goes by the name of Mr. Oiseau. Uh, and he came right out the bat with a really interesting film called Rubber a couple years back, which uh, was this crazy film about a rubber tire that is sentient and that falls in love with a chick and kills people. It was really weird and funny and quirky and just worked so well uh, done on a very small budget. It was one of the first films shot on a 5D which really um, cemented sort of the, the Canon 5D Mark II as uh, this cheap, well cheap, you know, it was a $3,000 DSLR but that you can make actual feature films with which was kind of a, a seminal moment and 
yeah, it, 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 it was just weird and funny and really well written, had a lot of quirky things to say. And then his next two films, I sort of fell out of love with them. Uh, they had some really good moments, Wrong and Wrong Cops. Um, but I, I just, I was kind of sick of the aesthetic. Again, the 5D, uh, let's pull the shutter speed up to like uh, one two hundredth of a second and have that weird movement. And, and even the quirks just didn't do it for me anymore. And then his last film uh, called Reality, uh, I couldn't recommend highly enough. I mean, it is the most Lynchian film never made by David Lynch. And I never thought that I could use that as a compliment. Generally, people that copy David Lynch, they really do it very poorly. They really don't understand what makes Lynch Lynch. And they, they, they just, uh, you know, end up making really poor imitations but this is actually yeah this is i would put that up with some of uh, some of lynch's films and it's 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 also incredibly funny and it talks about filmmaking in a weird way so if you're into filmmaking and have these weird creative dreams if you're into foley work and and sound recording i would also recommend it because that's a big part of the thing so it's his first uh fully french film and uh yeah i'm not sure when this will get a release date around north america but uh, i'm seriously looking forward to it next up on the list is harmony corinne's uh the beach bum uh i mean it's a harmony corinne film love him to death he's sort of broken in the mainstream a little bit with spring breakers but i would also recommend people check out mr lonely and gummo uh julian docky boy that, that one's hard to sit through i mean you have to be a super fan for that but yeah mr lonely if you want to see Werner herzog as a priest uh, leading, leading a congregation of uh, skydiving nuns. I mean, you know, I don't need to say much more. The Beach Bum, it's going to star Matthew McConaughey, which uh, over the past couple of years, I mean, there was the McConaughey and then, you know, he really hasn't been in much lately, not all that much of, of, of any note. I mean, Gold was absolutely catastrophic, like the most mediocre film you can imagine. And uh, I really want to see... Uh, what kind of performance he can give. I mean, I remember him sort of almost revitalizing James Franco's career, um, and uh, I'm, I, I really just cannot wait. Uh, next up is another French film, uh, directed by Guillaume Braque, and uh, is going to be called Le Bel Été. Uh, Guillaume Braque, a couple years back, I think it was in 2013, uh, directed a film called Tonnerre, uh, which was one of my favorite films of that year. It was just a beautiful, simple, understated film about love and loss and jealousy and it took place in the burgundian uh, it took place in the burgundian countryside in the winter it was just just a very beautiful touching film with an amazing central performance by a french actor that i really like that's now popping up in everything called vincent mckenna and uh yeah i don't know how anybody really could find this film uh outside of france but if you can uh, solid recommendation and so this is going to be a second film and uh, again really looking forward to it don't know how I'm going to be able to see it I don't know if it's going to get a release up here but uh, yeah I will definitely try and finally the last film on the list uh, is a movie that you've all uh, probably heard of you've probably even already seen the trailers that are playing in theaters it's coming out very shortly it is Wes Anderson's Isle of Dogs I'm not the biggest Wes Anderson fan. I wasn't completely sold on the Grand Budapest Hotel. I would be curious to see it again. But this is him going back to uh, stop motion animation and Fantastic Mr. Fox is one of the greatest animated films of the 21st century. It's funny, It's the animation is absolutely top notch and incredible and beautiful. And just in the way that Wes Anderson directs, you know, everything is so precise and mannered and uh, sort of not only that, but he shoots everything on like a 40 millimeter lens. So a lot of things are in focus. I mean, he uses deep focus a lot. So his, you know, live action films look like cartoons. They look like stop motion in, in many respects. And, and so when he moves to that form where you have to be incredibly precise, where every frame is so meticulously thought out and you know you just go frame by frame by frame and it's such a long and precise experience that it it just makes perfect sense that he that he would be really good at it and i am really curious to check this out the trailer hasn't fully sold me uh as of yet 
But then again, most of his trailers really never do anything for me at all. I mean, they're mostly about how many incredible actors show up, and they try to pick funny moments, but, but the comedy in his films are really much more contextual, um, which is why they hold up really well to repeat viewings, because things become funny as you keep watching them. Uh, they, they're really hard to package and sell in a two and a half minute trailer. But yeah, I'll definitely be there and I will be doing a review, obviously, uh, because I'm really highly anticipating Isle of Dogs. As always, thank you very much for watching. And um, yeah, if you've subscribed, thank you very much. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, because it allows me to have a sense of worth. It makes me feel like I'm semi-important and prevents me from uh, falling into an earth-shattering depression. So, um, thank you very much. <laughs>